Examples of projects. Um, these are live projects. These are happening. These are in the planning stage or post-planning stage, and they're about to, uh, they're about to hit, uh, hit the ground. Uh, we have a tyre pyrolysis project to Wilton. This has the capability of taking every tyre we throw away in this country, and potentially Europe, uh, and turning it back into oil, steel, and carbon black. Huge carbon implications, huge carbon reductions, huge resource implications. You know, we don't need to burn heavy oil to make new carbon black. We can use the tyres. Uh, we have a project on the North Tees, which we can't really name, but it is a major municipal waste gasification project that ultimately will produce very large volumes of green hydrogen. Why do we need green hydrogen? Um, no matter what you say about electric vehicles, at some point in the future, hydrogen will become a fuel. It, and if we can have green hydrogen, it becomes a sustainable fuel. And I think this is an example of a project that ca is capable of doing that. It's backed by a major uh, international player, and it's likely to happen. Some lower temperature projects we've got. We've got the project at INEOS at Seal Sands, which is going to produce uh, ethanol from waste. Uh, we've got a very small scale project in the northeast, which has been in the press in the last couple of days, which again, on a smaller scale, will take small volumes of uh, organic waste and produce diesel. Easy. All sorts of AD projects going on across the region, usually farm based, but dealing with a problem. There's at least half a billion pounds worth of projects there, and for every one of those, there's probably three or four waiting to come through in the wings as well. These are huge potential projects, creating employment, creating investment for the Northeast. Power generation. Uh, like it or lump it, I think it's generally accepted view. We are going to run out of power soon. The rate at which we're decommissioning power stations and, and the rate at which our, our use of power is going up, we're going to hit a crunch soon. Here are a whole range of projects happening in the Northeast using biomass. And I don't want to talk about the sustainability of importing biomass for power generation because that's a whole different subject. But these are real projects on the ground. Uh, you can see the scale of those projects. Some of them using imported wood waste, crops, trees, etc. Some of them using indigenous waste woods in, in, in the UK. About three quarters of a billion. These are big numbers. You know, we, we've seen the headlines about this project here, this project there. Collectively, we're now up to 1.25 billion pounds of the projects, and I'm only on page two. Carbon capture. We've not really talked about carbon capture too much today. Um, carbon capture is, A, a way of producing power in a clean way, but perhaps more importantly, it's a way of making sure our carbon-emitting industries in the Northeast have a future. Because right now, while carbon is cheap, and it is cheap, um, the industries can afford to emit. As carbon prices go up, that will become a bigger burden. We have the capability in the Northeast, particularly around Tees Valley and Lionmouth, to create a project that will not only generate more power, but it will have the ability to soak up carbon from those carbon-emitting industries and take it out into the North Sea and, and sequester it into an aquifer. It's a big project. Uh, but in terms of benefit to the Northeast, A, it secures the industry we have. B, it gives us a USP. We would be probably the only region with the, with the um, density of process industries that we have that would be an ideal home for new industries that do emit carbon to come to. It would be, a, it would be an easy choice for them to make to come here. Um, additionally, once you get that carbon into the North Sea, you're actually halfway to the oil fields in the North Sea. Uh, enhanced oil recovery using carbon dioxide is a well-proven concept. Uh, it just costs a lot to get it there. If this project gets it halfway, then it actually gives the entire North Sea oil fields uh, a new lease of life equivalent to the amount of oil that we've already extracted. There is as much oil in the North Sea that we can get out using CO2 that we've already got. It comes back to energy security supply again. About a billion and a half. Some big numbers. You know, we're getting up to sort of three or four billion now of projects. Um, Micro-renewables, bringing the scale down a little bit. Uh, we've seen the introduction of feed-in tariffs um, last week. Uh, we've seen the promise of a renewable heat initiative coming. Uh, there's a whole range of technologies here. You can see them on the screen. Uh, they have applications in domestic markets. They have applications in commercial markets. Um, those government initiatives will create a demand in those areas. What are the opportunities for the Northeast? Well, obviously it's supply chain. Uh, we do have people in the Northeast currently making some of this equipment. As the market builds up, there'll be an extremely powerful case for them to increase their capabilities. And we don't have much of an installation capability at the moment. Uh, there's a real opportunity for all of our installation businesses in the Northeast to ride the back of this wave and create more business and create more opportunity. 
Oh, we've talked about large wind. Um, I don't know about you, but I thought it really perverse that nobody asked the question of the minister this morning on the day when we announced a huge increase in the demand for steel, equivalent to one to four frigates a week. Tomorrow, we're seeing the demise of one of the oldest and most established steel businesses in, in the UK. I can't square that circle, I'm sorry. And we've talked about wind. Other people better qualify than me have talked about it. It is a huge opportunity for the Northeast, and I think we're beginning to take that opportunity and grasp it. Uh, and the last one I'll talk about is, is waste heat. Um, as a process, in, uh, with all the industry we have in the Northeast, it, it generates massive amounts of waste heat. And, and to date, we've not really been able to use that. There are some technologies coming along that might allow us to do that. But more importantly, we need to start, th start thinking about integrating our heat users with our heat producers. Uh, and where we have economic regeneration of housing or commercial properties, there is a real opportunity to use that waste heat, which is free heat, essentially. Uh, some of it is carbon-free, because the carbon has been associated with the products of the industry. Um, some real opportunities, but it needs to be thought through. It needs to be done in advance. It needs to be planned. It needs to be integrated. It's not that easy. A vision for the future, just to summarize. Where are we going to be in five years' time in the Northeast? And I've missed some things off this slide on purpose. I, I don't want to talk about electric vehicles or wind because there are people better qualified to do that. Um, we have to have carbon capture. It is not an option. The government has said it's going to support four schemes. There are four good schemes on the books, of which we are one of them. We need that scheme. Having got that, we can attract new carbon-intensive industry to the northeast. Um, the waste move, the waste agenda, will create huge opportunities for the northeast not only to manage its own wastes, but to drive value out of other wastes as well. Uh, we're going to see material going to landfill reducing. I think in five years' time, we'll probably see landfill mining as, as a business created and starting to come to the fore. Uh, I think it's an established fact. There's more gold per tonne uh, in some of our landfill sites than there is in some of the South African gold mines. Um, transport, I don't, want to, I don't want to talk about transport specifically because it is a huge agenda, but I think we really have to think very carefully about transport and how we integrate that with public transport, etc. And last but not least, some focus on resource efficiency. Uh, governments have been talking about resource efficiency and energy efficiency for years and years and years, but we never seem to do it. Final slide, the future. Um, we need a vision. We've got targets. Targets don't do much. We need a vision. We need a roadmap. We need a way of getting there. Uh, we need to develop that. We need to develop sustainability. We need to improve resource efficiency. A final thought. It's a personal thought, but it's shared by many. I don't think carbon dioxide is the issue. I'm sorry. Carbon dioxide is a very short-term issue. As a planet, we consume more resource than we can. We are consuming more resource than is available on this planet. Uh, it, will not, it will not be long before resource management resource use becomes the issue, not carbon. The Northeast, 20 years ago, was internationally recognized, whether it was for shipbuilding, whether it was for mining, whether it was for process industries, everybody knew the Northeast. I think we're on the brink of a revolution whereby in 20 years' time, people will know the Northeast again, but it will be around low carbon. It will be around the new future. Thank you.